Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Lamey Shaughnessy and today I'm going to walk you through installing the Digital Woodcarver 6 watt laser on your DWC 2440. Uh, currently I have uh, my DWC 2440 sitting here and I've got my control box unplugged and sitting on my tabletop. I want to talk to you about some of the things that are going to come with your 6 watt laser uh, if you've recently purchased one or if you have one. Uh, it's just kind of a checklist as well as talk to you about some of the tools that we want to have on hand to use for the installation and then some tools that might be handy to have around uh, but you may not use. So the first thing is uh, with our kit, of course, we're going to have the 6 watt digital laser. Uh, that is ready to install on the 2440. We're going to have the power supply and laser cable. Uh, it's kind of pre-wired for us. Uh, we will be removing a couple of the wires, but putting them back in, in the same place when we get it inside the control box. So we have our laser power supply. Uh, we've got a pair of laser glasses that uh, comes with the kit. So I've got a new set of glasses here. We should have a, a small bag of hardware, a couple of bolts and uh, wing nuts and things, a tinted skirt uh, that uh, should come with our kit, and then you'll have an extra part that will either be in some bubble wrap or a pink little package like this. This is a spare uh, laser head uh, culminator, uh, it's called. Uh, so we have that, and that is the items that will come with the kit. Now let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to need. So to open the control box, we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You can use a screw gun too, but when you're putting the screws back in, don't over torque the screws and strip them out. Uh, make sure you, if you have an adjustable chuck, turn that chuck down so it's uh, strong enough to put the screw in, but not over torque it and strip it out. But a handheld Phillips screwdriver is just fine. Um, we need a small miniature flathead screwdriver. A 7 16 inch wrench uh, is handy to have around. Uh, some zip ties of different, you know, variety of sizes or whatever, small and medium size. Uh, we may have to do a drill hole on the front of the box for the laser cable. So a 3 16 inch uh, drill bit and drill uh, would be handy. Uh, and then uh, those are kind of the main tools that you're going to need. Now, as far as some additional tools, uh, I've got a pair of uh, wire cutters here, or snips, uh, so that we can snip things off, uh, like zip ties and stuff like that. And then a pair of wire strippers. Now, you shouldn't need the wire strippers, but you may, right? So it's nice to have them on hand. All right, so that's all of the components and everything. Uh, so... What we're going to do is uh, we want to start off by opening up the control box. And like I said, be sure to unplug your control box. We don't want the power connected to it at all. Uh, there are four screws on the top of the control box, and there's three on each side. We want to remove those with our Phillips screwdriver. And I've already pre-removed my screws, so I can go ahead and lift my box lid up and set it aside for... Uh, later. No, we're not uh, need to do anything with that. Now, as far as uh, the cables on the front of the control box, your X, Y, and Z cables, there really isn't a need to remove them, but it does make things easier uh, to work on the front of the box if you have to drill some holes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect my X, Y, and Z cables from the front here. And if you have a fourth axis, remove that A axis cable as well. So we'll uh, let them kind of uh, hang down. Uh, as far as everything else, uh, we should be good. So now I can access the front cleanly. Now we're going to change camera positions and we're going to get up into the control box uh, close up for you guys and girls. Uh, we'll change the view so we can get in here. Uh, now when you first open the box up, it could look a bit intimidating with all the wires and things. Uh, but... Uh, you know, uh, these wires all go to a certain place and it may look like a whole lot and stuff. Don't let that intimidate you. 
Uh, we're technically only dealing with three wires uh, on the power supply to connect the power supply to the main power. Uh, we've got four wires coming out of our laser cable that two of them are going to connect to that power supply and two of them are going to connect to our control board. Uh, and that's it. Then we're going to run our uh, laser cable through our cable track back here uh, and uh, then mount our laser and be done. It's a really simple process to install. So let's reposition the camera and get things uh, moving along. Now, you should know how to open your control box because, you know, as a maintenance tip and everything, uh, depending on your shop environment and how much uh, dust there is and everything, there is a fan on the back of the control box that pulls in air to keep the internal components cool. Uh, but when it's pulling in that air, it's also point, pulling in any airborne debris and dust. So, you know, once a month or two, you want to actually open your control box up and blow out the dust and stuff. Uh, we don't want a buildup of dust to build up in here, you know, over long term, because that buildup of dust could cause our components inside to overheat, uh, and uh, that could cause some erratic behavior uh, in the CNC. So we want to keep our internal box clean, uh, and you know, that's just one of the maintenance process. Then we have things like lubricating the drive rods and stuff, and that's all for another video. We'll create a video on maintaining your digital wood carver. Uh, now, again, this is an installation for installing the uh, six watt laser on the DWC 2440 model uh, CNC. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is get the power supply prepped uh, to get it ready to install in the control box. Uh, the power supply comes pre-wired with our white, black and green wires. Uh, white uh, is our neutral line. Black is our power line and green being our ground. And that's on, if we look at the front of the power supply here, black is on the L for line, white is on the N for neutral, and our green is on our ground. Uh, and those will get connected to the main power inside the control box. Now we also have a V plus and a V negative here and our laser cable uh, has four wires, a red, black, white, and green wire. Uh, so let me pull out the white and green wire here. So white and green are disconnected and red and black. Uh, if we look here, the red wire is connected to V positive and the black wire is connected to V negative. Now you want to remember that uh, red V positive, black V negative and all because we're going to disconnect these two wires from the power supply so we can feed the laser cable in through the front of the box and then rewire it to the power supply once the wire is inside the box. So I'm going to take uh, the Phillips screwdriver and we're going to disconnect our V positive and our V negative, our red and black wire. Uh, we're going to disconnect that and now we can take our laser cable and get ready to feed it through the front of the box. Now on the front of the control box uh, here, we have wires coming out of the front of the control box, which are our touch plate sensor wires, our, our Z touch tool sensor wires. Uh, I have an additional wire coming out of the front of my control box for my digital probe, but uh, there's already two holes drilled on the front of the box and uh, currently my two holes are filled up. So we may need to drill a third hole. And we're going to use a 3 16 inch drill bit to do that. Now, I've already drilled my hole. And what you want to make sure of is that where you drill that hole inside the control box, you want to make sure that you have a clear path that when that drill bit comes through, it's not going to uh, drill into any wires or anything like that. And I have a nice clear path right underneath uh, these two holes here uh, that I can drill into. And so we would take our drill uh, and our drill bit and we want to drill in and make sure that when we drill in uh, that we don't hit any wires or any components on the inside. And where this hole is drilled down here, uh, it's open and clear. So uh, I'm good there. So a 3 16 inch bit in your drill. Uh, just when you're drilling, you know, be careful and be mindful where that drill is going to go into. And if you keep it in line 
with the two holes that are on the front of the control box. So you may only have one hole on your control box if it's an older model control box. But if you drill right underneath uh, where your uh, touch plate sensor wires and stuff go in or somewhere in that general area, you should be clear because you're going in between the motor and the drivers. And speaking of that, let's take a look inside the box and get a general layout of what's inside so you can be comfortable and understand what's going on inside the 2440 control box. Okay, so we if we are looking down inside the control box, uh, on your left-hand side, we have our control board, our CNC USB controller board. Right above the control board, if you have an old-style pendant that plugs into the front of the control box, this is the breakout board for that pendant controller. Uh, back here, uh, we have our four-channel relay module. Underneath that, we have a silver power supply. On the right-hand side of the box, we have our motor drivers, uh, X, Y, Z, and in my case, an A driver. I have a four-axis. Uh, back here in the back, we have our control fan, and then we have three breakers, a 5, 10, and 15 amp breaker. Uh, so right between the motor drivers and the control board in this little aisle way here, aisle way here uh, is where the power supply is going to go. Now, you have a uh, nest of wires here that are going from the drivers over to the different axes on the control board. And so we have to navigate those wires and we want to make sure that we don't accidentally unplug any of the wires uh, from the control board when we're getting the power supply in. So if you're worried about that, then the best thing to do is take multiple photos of your control box of the different areas and everything and the different wire connections, just in case a wire comes unplugged, we know where to put it back. Okay. Uh, but if you're careful with the installation, uh, you should not have any issue with, uh, you know, wires coming unplugged and stuff. Now, uh, the power supply itself uh, is ready to install in. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get our laser wire into the hole that we just drilled and into the box. Okay, so once we have that laser wire uh, fed into the front of the box, then we can go ahead and connect the red and black wires back to our V positive and V negative on our power supply. I'm going to use a simple board to act like a bridge across my uh, control box, and I'm going to set my power supply here so that I can take my laser wire, now that I have it fed into the box, and I can connect my two wires. And remember, the uh, red wire goes to V positive and the black wire goes to V negative. So we'll go ahead and get those back wired onto the control box. Okay, we want to secure those wires so they are nice and secured in there. And again, just the red and black. Uh, our white and green are going to get connected to our control board, so we're not ready for that. Now we're ready to get the power supply into position in the control box, uh, and then we will hook up our main power uh, cables to the uh, different components of the box. So I'm going to move my bridge out of the way. And... I pulled out enough cable into the box of the laser wire uh, just to give me some maneuverability, uh, but I will end up kind of pulling some back out uh, once I get the box in place. Now, your wires and cables that are coming from your driver over to your control board, they may be zip tied uh, in, in various places. If you have to trim any of the zip ties uh, to be able to move wires around, uh, to get the control box, the power supply in the control box, uh, that's fine. Do so, uh, but you may want to go back and do a little bit of cable management and re-zip tie those wires back. So uh, my power supply is going to be facing uh, towards the front of the control box, and I'm going to just open up that little alleyway there and carefully feed 
that control box in and making sure that all of my wires and stuff are out of the way and also making sure that I'm careful and not unplugging anything by accident. Okay, once the power supply is in there, it's just going to sit up on its side uh, with that front facing forward uh, and uh, in a comfortable position that we uh, can work with. Uh, it doesn't get secured down or anything like that. Uh, it will be held into place, you know, mostly by the wires that are going across it and stuff. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we have three wires that are coming out of the power supply, not counting our white and green from our laser cable uh, but our main power cables we have our black wire which is our line uh, and our black wire will have this uh, type of piggyback connector attached to it that black wire is going to go to the back of the control box to the bottom side of the five amp breaker okay and so we'll turn the box sideways so you can see that the white wire, our neutral wire, is going to go back to this five terminal connector. Uh, typically, there's one that's empty. And in my case, it's the middle one. So I'm going to flip that orange lever up and my white wire will go into there. And then my green wire will go to the ground uh, and I'm going to connect it to the ground of the power supply. So we'll turn this box sideways uh, so we can see all the connections back here for these three wires and then we'll move forward. Okay, so looking uh, kind of at a side view of inside the control box and everything, we can see our neutral terminals here, and I've got my middle lever uh, switched up where the, my white wire is going to go uh, inside uh, that hole. Uh, but right here, let's start with our black wire. Uh, the 5 amp breaker, and you can read on the back 5, 10, and 15. So 5, 10, and 15, the little push buttons has the numbers on there. But it's the first one over here on the left. Uh, the bottom side of this already has a wire connected to it, and that wire is going to our control box fan. We're going to remove this terminal off of the lower side of the 5 amp breaker. Uh, and you don't want to just pull on the wire because you could pull the connector out and everything. Uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver uh, to pop that off or, you know, a pair of wire uh, strippers, whatever you want to grab a hold of it. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use a uh, flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to unplug that by popping that off the connector, just like that. Okay. Now, uh, with my black wire, my black wire has this piggyback connector on it. Uh, I want to connect that wire that I just unplugged. I want to connect that to the black wire, to that piggyback connector. So I'm going to plug it in there. So we have that connection. And then I'm going to plug the black wire into that bottom terminal of the 5 amp breaker. So we're just going to slide that right onto place. Our white wire, our neutral wire and everything. Uh, if you're into your wires, they're not stripped. Use a pair of wire strippers to strip a little of the sheathing off. Uh, but uh, they should come pre-stripped. Most of them do. Uh, and this is going to go, I have an empty slot here uh, in the middle of this 5 volt. Uh, connector. So I'm going to slide my cable in and I'm just going to drop that orange level down uh, to lock it into place. And that's it. So very simple. Now, if I move this to the side uh, so we can see back here, uh, we have a green uh, ground uh, terminal bolt in the bottom of the box, uh, but your ground wire uh, may just come bare without a connector on it. Now you have absolutely, if you wanted to, you could put a connector on the end and just connect right to that ground bolt and everything. Uh, but I'm actually going to connect to the ground of the power supply. So on the power supply on the back here, and let's move this out of the way. If I raise this door up, you can see these screws here. And let's see if we can get a little bit of a, a straight up view. You can see those screws there 
and uh, we have a black, white, and a green ground wire going into the power supply on the ground terminal of that power supply. I'm going to put this green wire right next to this green wire that is connected to the power supply. So I'm going to come in here and loosen up my ground screw on the power supply. And then I'm going to take my green ground wire and get it into position. Make sure all those uh, wires are nice and twisted. And then I'm going to slide my ground wire in. And with that slid in, I'm going to tighten that green ground screw back down. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver because this can use a Phillips or a flathead uh, just to make sure my screw is nice and secured and everything is secured. So that takes care of connecting the power supply to the main power of the box. Very simple. Three wires and we're done. Now we need to focus our attention back to the control board to connect our lasers white and green wire uh, and uh, then we're done with as far as the wiring and installation. All right, so on the control board, and I'm looking again from a side view, the front of our box is over here. On our control board, we have a two pole terminal here that says eight volt positive side to 24 volt negative side. So eight to 24 volts, uh, positive and negative. Our green laser wire, our green laser wire is going to connect to the negative side of that terminal. So we'll go ahead and get that connected. That green terminal wire is located on the front left side of the control board. Uh, we're gonna need a miniature screwdriver, flathead, and we're going to loosen that negative side. We're gonna take our green wire and we're gonna connect it right into there. Now, you can put your green laser wire on any of the GNDs, the grounds on the board. Uh, you can actually, they're all tied together, so you can put it anywhere on the GND, on the terminals. Uh, but I like using, uh, for this, uh, I like using this negative ground terminal up here. And so, again, give it a nice little tug, make sure it's in there, don't jerk on it. But when you are tightening your flathead screw down, make sure you don't over torque that and break this terminal or anything like that, which, you know, it's, it's pretty stout, but still don't, don't try to kill it. We just want to secure the ground wire in. Uh, so, um, it, uh, it is, uh, secure. Now we need to concentrate on the left side of the control board. So I'm going to turn the control box back around for you guys and girls. All right. And on the control board, if we look closely, we can see this terminal here uh, is the output terminal. And our white wire is going to go on to out two, output number two, which is this second screw here. All right. Output number two. So that's where the white wire is going to go. So that completes by connecting that white wire, that completes the installation of our wiring inside the control box. All right, so uh, now that all the wiring is done in the control box and everything, we can go ahead and put our lid back on and get our control box set back up on the shelf and run our laser cable through our cable track and get ready to mount the laser and wrap up this job. Uh, just to recap, our power supply went into the control box between the motor drivers and the control board. That power supply, the laser cable, the red and black wire went into the power supply. Red was on V positive, black was on V negative. The white wire went to the out two on the output terminal of the control board. And the green wire went to our ground terminal, our negative terminal on the front right of the control board here. Um, and that completed the laser cable wiring. And then from the power supply, we had our white, black, and green wire, our line neutral and ground, uh, if you will. 
the line wire, the black wire uh, connected to the lower terminal of the five amp, sorry, breaker. Uh, and it piggybacked with that fan cable that was on there. The white wire went to our neutral terminal block here. And then our green wire screwed onto the uh, ground terminal of our main power supply. Or if you wanted to put a connector on it, you could connect it to the ground terminal bolt that's in the bottom of the box. Either one, I like connecting to the power supply. It's fine. Uh, once all of that uh, was done, that completed the installation of the wiring within the control box. So we can go ahead and put our lid back on our control box, put in our screws on the control box. And then we'll get the control box back on the shelf of our stand, you know, on the lower shelf of our 2440 stand. And then we will set up to run the laser cable through our cable track and connect our laser. So with the control box back on the shelf and everything, that uh, leaves our laser cable. Now our laser cable is going to follow our router power cord and our X and Y and Z cables right up through the cable track. Now on the cable track, there are ribs on the top of that cable track and a flathead screwdriver uh, on these ribs if they were snapped in like when they're closed. Uh, at the top part of the rib, there's a slot for a flathead screwdriver to fit into. Uh, you will uh, twist that and it'll pop that rib open and you want to pop open all the ribs all the way around on that cable track and everything. So once again, on our cable track here, I'm on the back side of the router now, uh, right at the top where these ribs are uh, and everything right at the top, your screwdriver will fit into a slot right here and you will twist and that will pop that rib up to open up like a little hinge door. And you wanna do that all the way around that cable track so that we can install the laser cable. With all of the ribs open, uh, you will now feed that laser cable all the way in and you're going to be following the router power cord and your Z-axis cable all the way around and up. And then our laser cable will terminate here. So when our laser is mounted to the CNC, it can plug right in. Now I want to make sure that my laser cable follows the path of my other cables because I'm going to end up doing some cable management and zip tying them together. Uh, so I want to feed that laser cable in uh, through the cable track all the way around. Once you get it in and everything, make sure down here going into the control box that we have enough slack that it's following the same path as our X, Y, and Z cable so we can zip tie that together. But once you get it into the first few ribs, you can go ahead and snap those closed uh, to hold it in place as you feed the cable the rest of the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and continue feeding through. And once everything is fed through and stuff, then I'll do some cable management uh, with the zip ties and stuff to clean everything up. Once you get your cable in a certain way, you can go ahead and track behind it and close your ribs up. They just snap closed and continuing following all the way through and around into that cable track. Now on the last uh, connection on that cable track, we want to feed the end of the cable up through following that. If you have a router following your router power cable, uh, if you have a water cooled spindle following your hoses, and it's going to feed through that last connector and everything. Make sure that that cable gets into your cable track. All right, and our cable is going to feed up following the router cable or your water hoses if you have a spindle uh, right up between the track and the drive rods. And we're going to come over to the Z axis motor making sure that we have enough slack that that router can raise up and down uh, and everything. And then we're going to zip tie the cable to these two uprights on the Z-axis motor right above our router cable and our Z-axis cable. And then uh, the XS is going to 
hang down uh, right beside the router so that the laser cable can hook into it. Uh, before you zip tie anything, make sure once again that coming from the control box, we have enough slack that the gantry can move all the way uh, from one end of the table to the other without uh, uh, putting too much stress on the cable. Okay, I've made sure that my X, Y, and Z cables were connected back to the front of the control box. And now I'm taking my laser cable and I want to make sure that it's following that same loop as the other cables before I zip tie them. Uh, I have a lot of excess uh, cable over here. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to manually, by turning my motor uh, coupler here, I'm going to manually raise my CNC up, my Z up to its highest limit and everything. And I want to make sure that I have uh, plenty of slack, but I still have too much cable kind of hanging down here. Uh, ideally, I would like it to be right about there. And if I do my cable management properly, uh, I can pull some excess cable back out here so that before I zip tie all of these cables together, that they follow that same curve uh, back into the control box. So I'm going to pull some slack here and make sure that I've got plenty of slack here. Uh, there's plenty there. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just get a couple of zip ties on to hold everything in place. So I'm happy with uh, the placement there. So I'll go ahead and get a zip tie on. And I'll just take my little cutters here, side cutters and uh, trim off the excess of the zip tie and I'm going to work my way uh, down making sure that I have that nice loop going right uh, following the other cables right into the front of the control box all right so once I have my cable management done here and everything and I'm happy with it uh, then I'm going to uh, do some cable management up at the top part here uh, and uh, that's good enough uh, slack right there where it's just uh, hanging down. So I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of slack up here, and I'll add a couple of zip ties. Zip tying the cable to the router cable or the Z-axis cable, just so it follows that same path. And again, trimming off the ends of my zip ties. So everything is nice and clean. On the Z-axis motor here, the motor is up on these four uprights. And my router cable, I happen to have a router. My router cable is zip tied to these and then it comes around. Well, I want my laser cable to uh, follow that same path. And I'm just going to zip tie it to these uprights. All right. So that gives me plenty of room. Uh, my laser cable, when it's not in use, it'll just kind of rest here, you know, anywhere in here it'll rest uh, as, you know, I'm carving and stuff. But when I have the laser attached, uh, then, you know, I have plenty of cable to plug it into. Now, the laser itself um, has a about a six to eight inch uh, connector cable to it that plugs right into the end of this connector. Now, let's talk about the mounting of the digital laser. Now, standard uh, with your 2440, you have a vacuum housing uh, that is bolted to the main router clamp, router bracket here. Uh, and typically your bolts are shorter. Now I have longer bolts in here because I've had a laser on my machine before. I'm just updating it with the new wiring and stuff uh, for this video. Uh, now, you with your laser kit, you would have received a hardware package which has uh, four inch bolts. Uh, some wing nuts and some washers uh, and your short bolts on the front. Uh, typically that's where the laser mounts. Now with me, I have a laser guide uh, mounted to the front. So my laser can't mount there, right? Because I have the laser guide. So for myself, I'm going to be mounting on the side of my uh, router here and standard uh, your dust port. Uh, that comes on your vacuum housing and everything it comes mounted with the dust port on the right side of the router and as you can tell my dust port has been turned around 180 degrees and it's on the left side 
Uh, that's because I want to mount my laser over here. You can uh, remove your dust housing and flip it around 180 degrees and mount it back here. Uh, if you need to do the same thing, if you have something like the laser guide uh, mounted to the front uh, where the laser would normally mount if there was no other accessory here. Now, uh, in my case, um, you have to remember you have a slot on the front of your vacuum housing that your small wrench slides into to lock the head when you're changing your router bit. When you turn this 180 degrees, that slot will be on the back side, and we need to do a little bit of changing around on the bottom part of the vacuum housing so that slot is still on the front. Um, the newer units might have slots on the front and back. I'm not 100% sure. I know mine did not, so I had to uh, disassemble my vacuum housing and take the middle plates here in the clear acrylic vacuum housing and turn them around so it had my slot on the front so I could put my vacuum housing on the left side. Now with me again, uh, my laser guide is here, so I'm gonna use the two side bolts and I've already got four inch side bolts in here. So all I have to do is uh, take the nuts off, which I've already pre-loosened. get those nuts off. Uh, it's a 7 16 inch wrench uh, to take these top nuts off. I'm going to not be utilizing the bolts that came with the kit because I already have bolts in mind, but I am going to be utilizing the washers and the wing nuts. Now my laser uh, has uh, the mounting bracket and everything already mounted to it. And so that will connect uh, to there. Uh, and then I will put on, you don't need the washers, but I like using them. So we're going to put on the two washers and then we will put on the wing nuts. And we will tighten those down. Uh, so let me get my second wing nut on here. Okay. Uh, now I will take my laser cable and I will connect it to the laser wire that I ran earlier uh, that we just wired up and slide that on and lock that together okay and so now my six watt laser is mounted now when you're running your laser the bottom of the laser here uh, should be two inches above your material when you zero out the z of the laser it's two inches above the material so you want to make sure that you don't have your a router bit in the router or spindle and you don't want to have your collet on there we need to be able to get this router low enough to where the bottom of the laser here is two inches above our material. Now, when you're not using the laser, when you are doing routing, uh, carving and things, uh, you do not want the laser attached. You will detach it and set it on a shelf or store it away. Uh, we don't want a lot of dust and everything getting into the uh, diode and all that stuff. So that's why you have the wing nuts so that you can easily uh, remove the laser when you need to or install it when you need to. Uh, you'll unplug it and disconnect it and put it away when you're not using it. You won't keep it attached to the router permanently. You don't want it attached while you're actually carving uh, with the router or spindle, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, that completes the installation of our six watt laser. Uh, the only thing that we need to do now is set up our CNC uh, USB controller or our Planet CNC TNG software, and we are ready to go. And that, uh, the setup of our TNG software for the laser uh, will be in a separate video. All right, well, that was it for installing the laser. So just a quick recap of everything. Uh, we unplugged our control box, got it up on the table, opened up our lid, and we had to install the power supply for the laser. Uh, we had to run our laser cable from that power supply up through our cat track and down so it could connect to our laser here. Uh, our power supply connected to the main power through the five amp breaker with our black line wire, our neutral bar with our white wire and our green ground wire went to our ground on our power supply. Uh, for the laser cable itself, our black and red went to V positive and V negative. 
and then our white went to output to or out to on our control board and then our green wire went to ground once all that's done once our cable is run and everything we are ready to go uh, very simple installation i believe that you know uh with uh as far as time installation wise you could knock this out in you know less than an hour uh very easily le way less than an hour uh, and everything even if you don't have any electronic experience because we're just minimally working with wires all right everybody well thank you for joining me for this video and until next time i'll see you soon